All right, guys, here we go. There we go. Select this. Oh, so we're recording, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. Hey, this is Steve Garfield from stevegarfield.com, and this is a G Plus Hangout on Air. We're back from South by Southwest, and we all had such a great time. Um, and we're going to just do a rundown of, of our, my friends here and share what was the best from South by Southwest. And tomorrow, we're going to look at the worst or the bad. But today, it's all good. <laughs> so obviously, we'll start with from all good is C.C. Chapman. What's up? So I hope you can see me because I can't see anybody. This is weird. This is weird. Um, so I'm C.C. Chapman. I'm supposed to talk about what was good about South by. Um, what was good about South by? Lots of things. My favorite, my favorite thing. I was trying to. Th I was thinking about this sitting down. Uh, my favorite part of South by is I actually t took the time to sit down with some people that I had met maybe in years past or knew only online, and literally took the time to sit down and get to know them. I mean, Gretchen Rubin, who wrote a great book called The Happiness Project. Um, you know, we sat down for like an hour and a half and just talked books and. Uh, Erica, Erica, who just wrote the new book, um, the the oh crap, she's oh, gonna kill me. Being unpopular, unpopular. yeah, yeah um, was it? You know, we we met last year really really quick, and we actually sat down for a couple hours, and so that was that was my favorite part of South by was really taking the time to hang out with people that I didn't know already, and just one on one get to know each other. Um, that's hard to do with something like South by, but honestly. That was some of the best quality time that I that I had, um, and of course the serendipity of South by still happened a lot. Um, I know Steve, you experienced that with me, where I was having a, a meeting with some agency folks from here in Boston, and you happened to swing by. I'm like, oh, you guys got to meet, and um, there was lots of that happening as well. And then the final thing that was a, a nice highlight is there's this guy Kevin Smokler, who he's the reason that I went to South by the first year. He used to do a how to rock panel, how to rock South by panel every year. And his personal rule was he always brought a newbie every year, someone who had never been to be on that panel. And I was one of those people one year. And Baratunde was one of those people one year. And a couple other people. And last year they started this breakfast where we'd all try to get together and catch up and see what everybody's doing. And we actually got to do that on Tuesday uh, over at Joe's Coffee. And it was a great just – it was kind of cool just to catch up and where we don't see each other but once a year for the most part and to catch up on – where everybody's going, and you know, you know, especially with Baratunde, you know, he had a blow up year this year, uh, and it's continuing to blow up. So that those, honestly, those that those were the best best parts of South by for me. So um, there was a thing, a theme that I saw. Uh, Chris Hure was wearing a T-shirt, and it was um, going badgeless for yeah. South by. So I thought this was the I thought this was the good show. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> so that is a good thing. Well, actually. All those things you just mentioned, the best parts of self by yeah. for you were nothing, none of the parts of self by that you would need a badge for? Fair enough. Fair enough. I just wondered because people want to go down there and they just wonder, do well, I need a badge? And I know. I don't think you have to have a badge necessarily, but I also do think that, I mean, my self by this year was a lot different than any other year I'd had where I had so many meetings and interviews and other stuff that I missed out on panels that I really, really, really wanted to go to, that I would have had, that I, you know, I really wanted to go to them, um, and I couldn't for other priorities taken, and that bummed me out. So, yes, you can do self by completely without a badge, but there's a lot of good, too, that comes with a badge. Right. Okay, Jeffrey. And this. Oh, and thank you, Steve. This is another good part of self by. I don't even know if you can see that, because I can't see myself. What is it? That, that's the uh, <laughs> Nike Fuel. Oh, okay, yeah. So, I so wanted one of those when I saw it. It was like the coolest thing. Thanks so Steve Garfield it, from stevegarfield.com. Yeah, it, it's a, it's a <laughs> pedometer, and it also uh, measures some other stuff. <coughs> yeah, but it is very cool. So, Jeffrey, how about your best of self by? Well, th I think if I can screen share this right, this is my this is my biggest uh, biggest uh, best of South by. This is uh, <laughs> me and Derek, and uh, we are we're going on tour as Robert Scoble and uh, and uh, uh, his production guy. Uh, the guy from Rocky. ZG Top. Rocky, <laughs> come on. We're, we're going we're going uh, we're going to do the uh, lookalike contests. And uh, go out there and and go from there. So, but no, I, l literally, I uh, 
I had a whole ton. There were a lot of people that the the one thing my first South by Southwest, but I cannot believe how many people I knew already down there. It just made it so comfortable. I mean, yeah, it was Chris Chris Hewer and Christy Wells from Blog World. Uh, Lynette, uh, Steve, I saw you at the blip party, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, Cece, we didn't. I don't think we ran into each other. No, I don't think I saw you once. Yeah. yeah. I didn't see Lynette either. No, I saw it last year too. I was like, I probably won't bump into any of the guys that we're doing the hangouts with. Right. <laughs> so uh, that that and uh, I I met a whole ton of people, uh, including uh, um, let's see, I, I ran into Dean Kamen, and I didn't get a chance to say hi to him. I saw um, I met uh, met the guys from Epic Meal Time. Uh, Harley, I think, is his name, and got a picture of him. Uh, Daria Musk from G Plus. Uh, she did her Hangout concert in the Samsung Blogger Lounge, and uh, I did a lot of video on that, and which I'm going to be posting up in the next couple of days here. Um, and just lots of people, and I, I didn't have a badge myself, uh, and I, I still was able to get into a lot of stuff and meet a lot of people. I met uh, Bertunde uh, for the first time uh at uh, South by Southwest and it was just it was just an amazing time so anybody that says that they can't afford to go down there anybody that says that they can't they don't have the time to go down there they 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 need to if if they really want to get down there they should get down there and I think that's uh I met a lot of people I got a, a, a fistful of cards that I've got to input in and and start talking to people and uh hopefully uh get the name out over at Geekazine Cool. And all my pictures, by the way, are up on geekazine.com. Okay. Great. Lynette? Um, you know, it's funny because it's every time I ever hear about people talk about the best things from South by, it's always the people. Um, not that the sessions weren't good. I had some good sessions. The, the one that I went to, and I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it was basically um, why aren't, if women rule um, – online, like if we have a stronger presence online, then why aren't we more dominant on social networks? And I was very interested to see that one. And I spent half my day getting over to the hotel because it was at one of the hotels that was south across the river. So I had oh. to f get the, I call it the trolley, the, the South by bus, go over there. Get, and it was a 15-minute coffee break talk. I was livid. Um, it was a good talk, but they didn't really disclose on the schedule that much that it was going to be a 15-minute talk, so I was kind of mad that it literally took me all stinking day to get down there, or afternoon, for a 15-minute talk, and then the girl that, or the woman that did the talk um, was pregnant, very pregnant, and didn't want to stick around afterwards, so she bolted, so I was like, ah. Oh. Oh. I was really bummed to have to, and she's from Germany, so like there's no catching her anyplace else. <laughs> But I was, but I liked a lot of those talks um, that I wound up going to. I have to say, I like the Samsung Lounge. That's for some reason in in our wacky industry. That's where you go to bump into people that you want to bump into. Um, they have really good programming, I think, and um, but it's not too intrusive. It's not like one after the other. So you could actually go into the lounge and get work done. Um, I wound up running into a lot of agency people that I needed to meet. But because I decided so late in the game, like literally a week before, I was, go you know, I was like, oh, it's the Wednesday before. Let me go to South By. Um, I didn't get a chance to do meetings and things like that. Like I didn't get a chance to set them up. Like CC was, you know, pre-loading his dance card and knew that he needed to get down there because this is where everybody's going to be in one place. And um, I didn't really get a chance to do that. Or, or when I got in touch with people, or they got in touch with me, and they were like, "Oh, you're going to be there." Crap, my schedule's already full for whatever. Um, so I squeezed in a lot of meetings when I can. But I wound up. Um, for me, the coolest thing was is I have a, a client that's local or a soon-to-be client that's uh, regional to me up here in the Philadelphia area, and I was really excited that they ran into me at South by, and I was able to sort of. Um, get them into some VIP parties and get them some meetings with people that they were looking to get to. So that kind of being that connector for me was very cool. Um, so now, you know, my follow-up phone call comes tomorrow for them to go and talk about the stuff that pays. So um, running into people, even though it's my area, um, you know, in Philadelphia, down in Austin was very cool because I think it also solidified the fact that, um, you know, I, I pay attention to the industry, not that they think I wouldn't, but... Um, I think it was really cool that when you get seen by people that need to see you and you get to meet with people that need to meet with you, 
um, that's really the best parts of South by for me. Yep, I totally agree on that. And um, I actually made a blog post while I was down there, a quick one with different people I'd met on one day, which was amazing. But for this recap, I'm going to share uh, my screen, which uh, let's move this out of the way. So you just see in the blog now. Yep, my top five events from South by. Yep. yep. Click, Lynette. click the page first. The, the oh. oh, let's try that again. <laughs> oh, there we go. There you go. Okay, you can even see <laughs> a little Lynette over there. That's, That's crazy. But here, let's um, go ahead. So I just want to, I, first I want to say that doing the show prior to South by, the road to South by Southwest made me really seriously look at each day's schedule, which is so overwhelming. So I planned out, you know, like crazy what I wanted to do each day. And this one day, I had probably 20 things planned. And then the morning of, I circled two and ended up going to one, <laughs> which, you know, was fine. But I just wanted to highlight the top five things I did at South by. And the number one thing on my list here is I went to see Bruce Springsteen in his keynote. So I stayed a little extra from music, which I'd never done before. And all of Austin totally changes when music starts. It's the greatest thing. The, the big um, event rooms are cleared out of chairs, and then they have band showcases. So you walk into a room, and, and there's you know, an hour of bands playing from Australia, one after another, 15 minutes. It was so good, and I love listening to music. So. I knew I just did not think I was going to be able to get into the Bruce Springsteen keynote, um, but I just walked over there at um, 1130 and the keynote was at noon and people had been there for two to three hours, you know, ahead of time, huge fans. And so they got seated way up front, 1130 I walked right in <laughs> and it was to just open to me and there were, there were about six people holding this sign right in front that says, no photography or videography of any kind allowed, allowed in keynote. And they said, including press. That was so restrictive. I just was really shocked that they had that. Um, but the keynote that he did is was live streamed. And uh, you know they actually did a very poor job of letting people know that it was live streamed. But it was. And I found it over on YouTube. And if people want to see that keynote, they can go to stevegarfield.com and click on my blog. It's right there. But Bruce Springsteen was really amazing. Talked about how he learned about music and he asked someone in the crowd if they had a guitar. Someone gave him a guitar. He started playing songs. Really, really good. Number two um, was this Jeffrey Tambor acting workshop and I've done this for like four years in a row and this is something I never want to miss. And I've never had any acting training but what Jeffrey Tambor does is he takes two actors and he brings them through uh, this scene that they're, they're doing and he he basically breaks them down and builds them up and he asks like the girl in, in this, um, her name was Kate Scheel, S-H-E-I-L, and the guy in the, in the workshop was Matthew Newton. He's like, so he asks her, this is just an example of one of the things he does and he does so much to help them act. Um, you know, who yells in your family, your mother or your father? He says, she says, my father. Who are you closer to? my mother. And so he, he gets down deep into what is really what they're made of. And then he says, okay, you're now your father, <laughs> which and she would never yell. And he got her, the acting at the end is so much better than it is at the, at the start. So I just love that um, session. Really, really good. And then the third thing, and I have five things, so I'll just go through these pretty quick. The cast of Bob's Burgers. I don't know you guys know that cartoon on Fox. Yeah. It's like, one of my favorite shows, and the, the little son in there is Eugene Merman. He's a friend of mine. So I went to go see, they did a night of stand-up. So all the car characters who do the voices, you get to see them do stand-up. And so Eugene Merman, he was there. Um, another guy who's on the show is Dan Mintz. He does the daughter. <laughs> so a guy does the voice of the daughter. It was so funny to see him doing that. And then um, Kristen Schaal is is one of the other daughters. That was really cool. And CC, you mentioned Baratunde Thurston. His keynote was amazing. I saw a lot of keynotes, and his keynote was one of the best. One hour of perfect 
he was just so perfect doing the keynote. Um, really funny and right on, right on, and um, it was a really great keynote. And there's the crowd. He was in the, this huge room. I don't know if any of you guys went to this huge room. It could have seated like 5,000 people maybe, but that was the baritone keynote. And then um, Ogilvy does this thing of they, they draw um, graphic notes of the talk as it's going on. And so they did one of the Baratunde keynote, and I took a picture of that. And then the final one, the, the fifth thing that I really liked was there's a new show coming on HBO called Girls, and the cast and crew and the producers and the writer and the creator, they were all on a panel. And it was so interesting to hear them talk about how the show was created, how they work with the scripts, how they get directors, and you know how they choose all that. And so I'm really into you know behind the scenes of film and all these things. So... Um, I, that was one thing that I uh, really liked. So those were my uh, top five. And look, I think it's Jeff Cutler <laughs> Live that joined us. <laughs> Jeff, you're I, live. I am live. Hey, well, Steve. that's good. Hey, um, hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We couldn't play your video through the chat, so why don't you tell us your... Uh, Holy cow. Your, be your bests from South By. How do I even remember? Um <laughs> The, they must have the, stood out if they were the best, right? Yeah. <laughs> the best things that I saw were a few of the sessions, and I'll name those in a second, but outside of the convention hall and even in the convention hallways, we've heard this numerous times. Everyone talks about the networking being the best, but again, this year, there's no value you can put on running into people who you haven't seen in ages or even met before. And this year... It was fantastic. I did come away with five or six new people who I met who were doing exciting things that inspired me to go back and do exciting things when I'm home. I got to run into Joe Jaffe, who I haven't seen for, I don't know, a dog's age. Ran into some guy named Chris Brogan, who was uh, just fly-by-night in and out of South By. Saw Greg Cangelosi, who I got to do a video with. And just a handful of people who I haven't seen really made it worth being on site down there because otherwise I wouldn't connect with these people for another year. The session that I really liked was the Top Chef session. It was a packed room and everyone's just fanatic for the show anyway. But what they did differently, if you don't watch the show, this year they really incorporated the power of social media on top of traditional television. They did an after-the-show show called Last Chef Standing. Not really easy for me to say with a little lisp, but it was an event where you would participate online and just really talk about what was going on with the last chef, who if they win their competition, they keep traveling along and could get back into the top chef competition. So they talked about how they did the business of incorporating online versus traditional and incorporating social into that as well which was really cool because I haven't seen a major network really talk about that. And Bravo was really transparent when they told us what was going on. Uh, beyond that, I don't know. The food in South By is fantastic. I had a great dinner with a guy named Steve Garfield. I went to <laughs> Kenichi again, which was fantastic. And because I stayed a few days late, I got to see some music that I was really excited about. But we're talking interactive, so I don't want to mess that up. But <laughs> those are my good things. Yeah, Cece, um, you know, you were at the airport when that Anthony Bourdain session was happening that you really wanted oh. to go to, and yep. they did such a poor job of telling people that that was going to be live stream. but that was awesome, too, like what Jeff said about them using social media. They totally talked about how they're using um, Tumblr and Twitter and Facebook, and they're looking at live streaming, and they're really on top of social media on that show. And it yep. got me to want to see the show, too, Cece, because I... I don't think I've ever seen it, but um, it sounds... Like really? Oh, Wait, which one? No reservations or the layover? The layover um, I love. No, I, no no reservations. Is that... Well, the one they were talking about was where they theme each show differently, like, like based on a movie or different things like that's, that? Yeah, that's that's no reservations. Yeah. That love sounds that sounds pretty show. cool. That's my dream job, is that show. That's what <laughs> I want to do for a living. You want to travel around like that? Yeah, oh, without, oh, yeah, 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 no. Anthony Bourdain has my dream job. That's what I want. If, if, if everything, if push came to shove, that's what I would love to do. Writing books and traveling around the world, experience things and filming it all? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I would love to do. 
Put me on that list too. Yeah. <laughs> and do it together. Even see exactly. hit the road. Come on. All right. Well, Let's we do can it. do we can do the New England area to start, right? Yeah, sponsors. <laughs> We're not that hard to find. <laughs> I'll come to the New England area and go with you. There you go. So yeah, um, so South by was really great. Um, let's wrap up this recording of this show. And so tomorrow we're going to do South by Southwest. I think we say the bad and how to fix it. Maybe we'll put it that yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, thanks everybody about, for watching. How about the, the needs improvement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. There are a few things. All right. Bye bye everybody. See you, Steve. See you guys. Bye. You can cut the video there, I guess. All right. Same time tomorrow. Yeah, I'm in tomorrow. I have Green. rants. We need like a two-hour show because tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow I have a list of things that really need to be fixed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I uh, yeah, I have to agree with you on that. In fact, I don't know when they open up tickets for next year. The dates are already up, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, they already locked all the hotels down too. You can't do the hotel thing unless you go to the Hyatt across the river. They do have rooms right now, and they're accepting reservations. Yeah, but wow. you can only buy hotel uh, like approved hotels or whatever the good ones are through South by though, right? right. Next year, exactly. and they haven't opened that yeah. up yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, they're not going to open it until uh, the lady at the hotel was saying something like August. Yeah, that's when it usually is. It's usually right. It's because usually the panel picker submissions are in June. Yep. And then July August time frame, they start doing the voting wow. and they open up registration. So no, I bought my ticket last August. Yeah, I think last year that's what I did. This year I was like, yeah, I didn't want it. But yeah, I think I'm going to have to go and uh, make sure I get a decent hotel room this yeah. year. Yeah. Well, last year, you guys knew I did the whole year before thing, right? I yeah. Last year I didn't go to South By and I watched the dates. And during music, I contacted the Driscoll and bought 15 days or 15 nights at the Driscoll for the next year, not knowing what the dates were yet. And, or 21, I got 21 days, sorry, not oh 15. God. And uh, once I knew the dates, I whittled it all the way back, but I whittled too far. So I had to get a night at the Hilton. But other than that, I was at the Driscoll for the whole time for 2.49 a night. Yeah, that's on my list of worsts because I'm going to talk about that tomorrow. Yeah. Cause you, oh, you, the hotel you, thing? I, w I watched your video on YouTube. I f did you mention the Driscoll at night? Yeah. I yeah, did. and that but made me think of my bad memory of the bouncer. Oh, oh yeah, that. <laughs> what a jerk. But um, we'll save that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's going to be a rant fest off. tomorrow. <laughs> oh, my God. He's I'm going to wear like a bandit mask so they can't tell who it is. <laughs> I am going to complain about everything. All right, so more than 30 minutes tomorrow for sure. <laughs> All right, All thanks right, guys. on that. All right. See you guys. Right, guys. Bye. Bye.